for those of you who do not know Carol, uh, she serves as an assistant director of the Washington DC Family History Center, where she coordinates classes, conferences, and community outreach projects. An active member of the Greek genealogy community, she shares her knowledge by participating in Greek online associations, writing articles, and teaching at local and national conferences, like this one. Her ancestors are from several Sp Spartan villages, including Ayus Ioannis and Amikles. Her passion for Greek family history has prompted her to volunteer to preserve at-risk and historic records in Greece, beginning with the digitization of marriage records at the metropolis of Sparta. She is affiliated with Family Search on several initiatives and with GreekAncestry.net on record acquisitions in Greece. Carol blogs about her Greek research at Spartan Roots in Agios in Sparta. She also writes personal and family histories and is a volunteer at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Guys, let me tell you that this is a very modest bio that Carol provided. <laughs> um, thank, thank you, Greg. <laughs> thank you for being with us today and helping with the conference. The floor is yours. All right, wonderful. You can start. Okay, I will start. Welcome, everybody. I am really so excited to be with you today. And thanks, Greg, for such a wonderful partnership. We've worked together on a lot of things over the years, and I hope it'll continue way into the future. So in this session, I am going to present information to help you find your family's original surname and your family's village of or origin. So I am talking from personal experience because I've been researching my family for many, many years. And I have learned sometimes the hard way how important it is to have this specific information because without it, you cannot begin to research your family in Greek records. First, you have to know the unaltered original surname of your family. So when you look at this chart, I'll give you, I gave you a couple of examples. Immigrants often shorten their names by either cutting off the ending or cutting off the beginning. Or they took an English name that was a translation of their Greek name. For example, Diamantis could have been anglicized to diamond. So um, think about this as you look at the names that are in your family, which ones could have been shortened. If you have a Pappas or a Poulos, trust me, it's a redacted name. So you need to dig in and find out what that real name is. If you have a name like Diamond or something that translates from a Greek word, then you at least have a hint of what that original name could have possibly been. The second thing is you absolutely have to know the exact village that your family came from. My family, three of my four grandparents are from Ioc Iwani, Sparta. There are over 18 villages just in the Peloponnese that have the name Ioc Iwani. So I need to know that my family came from Ioc Iwani, Sparta, not Ioc Iwani, Achaia, or something like that. So original village and the region in Greece where that village is located. Why these two items are first, remember Greek records are written with the surname that the village had, that the family had in the village and each village kept its own records. Remember that the country of Greece itself does not have a database where you can go in and type a name. You can do it now on Greek ancestry and you can also do it on my heritage which is um, the only other website, major website, that has any Greek records online that are searchable by name, both in Greek and in English. But if you go into Greece itself or you look on, the, on a website for Greece to try to find such a database, there isn't one. Last year, Georgia Stryker Kielman and I put our heads together and we came up with two charts to help you. This chart here is a chart for where you can find specific record information in your ancestor's new country that may give you the original surname and village. This chart shows you Excuse me just a second.
they're telling me that my screen isn't sharing. Okay, let's start from here. Okay, I'm sharing now. Um, sorry, I apologize. I didn't realize I've gone through six slides and I did not realize that I wasn't screen sharing. Um, okay, so let's just pick up from here. So this particular chart shows you in your, your ancestor's new country, his new homeland, where you can begin to look for specific records. And that, I, what I need you to do and what you're gonna have to do is look at every one of these record collections in order to make sure that you have the correct information. This chart that Georgia and I created shows you which types of records in Greece, in the Greek records, can provide information that you are looking for. So look at both of these. They're going to be downloadable on the Greek Ancestry website. And after the conference, print them out, save a, a soft copy on your computer, because these are going to be your two guidelines to help you find your original surname and village of origin. Another place to get started is the Family Search Wiki. Now, Family Search is a free genealogy website, and it has an extensive wiki. A wiki is not where you go look for names. A wiki is where you go look for information. So on the Family Search Wiki, whatever country your ancestor emigrated to, be sure you go to that wiki page on Family Search and start. Um, looking around, it will give you information about the country itself. It will give you links that are online um, that can help you find the records you need in your uh, ancestors' new country. Okay, let's start with the very first and very important vital records birth, marriages, and deaths. Always, always, always begin with primary sources, which are these vital records. I cannot tell you. How many times people come into the National Archives and they want to try to find information on, on a particular family member? And the first thing I say to them is, what's on the birth record? What's on the marriage record? What's on the death record? And they say to me, oh, I don't have that. I just want to find this person in, in whatever, a passenger ship or something. No, 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 you don't do that. You have to get the birth, marriage, and death records first. They were created at the time of event and they are your primary sources. Here's a birth record for my dad. Now, note the corrections that were made. Originally, his name was written as Costas, then it was corrected to Costacos. Notice the maiden name of the mother is written on this record, um, Hariklia Arida. The place of birth for both parents is just Greece, not the village, but still with this American birth record, I do have a maiden name for my grandmother. This is a Greek Orthodox baptism record from Australia. It gives the names of the parents and their villages. So the father is Dimitrios Vragalis, born in Neocastro, and the mother of the child is Paraskevi. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't give us her surname, but it does give us her village of Lekuri Elasona. So we are off to a good start with this record. And I want to thank um, my friend Nick Fragalis for sharing it with us. For marriage records, there are three different types. There's a license that's issued by the state. There's the official marriage certificate issued by the state and the church marriage certificate. Now, civil and church marriages have different information. So you have to find them both. If you find a civil record, that's fine. If you find a church record, that's better, but find them both. And I'll show you why. This is a civil marriage record for my maternal grandparents. It does not give the name of the village. It only says Greece. And you can see um, on the left where I've extracted the information that it does give us information about the bride and about the groom. Now, look in red at the date. The date says the 10th of May, 1914. This is the same couple's marriage certificate from Holy Trinity Church in New York City. Now, it gives different information. 
It gives both the bride and groom's father's names, but not their mother's names. However, it does give us the village names, which were not in the civil record. Ios Iwani, Sparta, and Mistras. So by taking the two records together and combining them, I am getting a much fuller picture of the information that I need. Now, the other interesting thing is look at the date that's in red. It says 27 10 April 1914. So why does the civil record have May and the church record have April? The discrepancy is the church was still following the Julian calendar. So it gave the 27th of April as the Julian date, but it also reflected the date of the 10th, which is in May. Now, um, this is important information. You should record both dates in your genealogy database. For death records, there are a lot of places to look. Um, and some of them are listed here and they are listed on the handout that you'll have. But I want you to look closely at this tombstone. This is in Mount Olivet Cemetery in New York. Even though my grandfather changed his name to Pappas, the family put Papayanakos on the tombstone. So if I was kind of coming up with some blank um, searches, just going and finding the tombstone and, and looking at it may give you the original surname. Also, some cemeteries, um, the surname is written in Greek, and that's very important too. Here's my grandfather's civil death record. This record is accurate for the death information, which was given by the doctor who certified the death. But all the other information that's in that red box was given by an informant. In this case, the informant was my uncle, my grandfather's son. He got some of the information wrong, particularly his um, grandfather, his, his grandmother's name, my grandfather's uh, mother. Um, so be careful, beware, um, make sure that the information that you're looking at, who was the informant and is it the primary source for that event? That event here is the death. So the information about the death is correct. Everything else given by an informant is susceptible to error. If you know where your ancestor attended church, call and ask the secretary if you can look at the death records to find your ancestor's death record or if the secretary would be willing to do that. This record is from Three Hierarchs Church in Brooklyn. It's a good source for the name as it's written in Greek, but the exact village is not given. Here it says Sparta, not Ios Ioannis. We already talked about the actual tombstones in the cemetery, but I wanna point out that some in some communities, people have compiled information about those that died, um, the Greeks that died in their areas. A lot of larger cities have Greek sections in their cemeteries. So be sure to find out, and you can ask at the church, has anybody compiled um, a record of who is buried in the Greek cemeteries. Let me show you why this is so important. Here's a page from Nick, excuse me, from Nicholas's book, Nicholas Previs, who compiled the book on Woodlawn Cemetery in Baltimore, Maryland. Look at all the name changes. This is why it's so hard to find your people in the records. On the right side is listed the ancestral village. And on the left side is the name of the person as they were shown in the cemetery records and in the church records. This book is an absolute gold mine. And I hope, I hope that there is something similar in your area to help you. The second group of records to look at is immigration and naturalization. When your ancestor came to his new country, the paperwork which followed him is very important to find. Passenger ship records, we all know about them. They're the first thing that people look for. Now, depending on the country, they can be found in archives or in genealogy databases like MyHeritage or Ancestry. And right here and now, I wanna correct a myth. Please do not perpetuate the myth that names were changed at Ellis Island or some other, uh, some other port of entry. That is absolutely, totally false. And it leads people to misinformation. What happens is when that when your ancestor boarded that ship, he gave his name, he or she, 
and he or she answered specific questions. That record, what was written down with his name, was given to the ship captain. The ship, the ship captain took it with him on the ship across the sea, and it was handed to the individual um, who uh, collected the records for that particular ship. Each passenger had to answer the same questions in his new country that he answered when he embarked on the ship. And he was checked off on that manifest, literally checked off. So if he said his name was Tom Jones when he got on the ship in Piraeus, then on the other side, his name was Tom Jones on that manifest. It's not that somebody changed his name, that's the name he gave. Here's an example of some of the questions that are asked on some of the little later manifests later, meaning later than 1905, 1906. As you can see, there are two questions asked, which will help you find the original surname and village. Um, the name and address of the relative and the country he came from and his or her place of birth. This is an immigration record from the National Archives of Australia. It's filled with the exact information that you're seeking, father's name, mother's name, date, and place of birth. This is a 26-page file, and it includes detailed medical information about the informant. So if you have family in Australia, you have a gold mine here. And again, I want to thank my friend Nick Vergalis for sharing this document with us. If you're in the U.S. and you cannot find your ancestor in Ellis Island or other passenger ship records, consider that he or she crossed from Canada into the U.S. In this example, we see that Ekaterini Ladis um, said that she was born in Sparta. However, her brother is Demos Zacharopoulos in Ios Ioannis. So I would tend to um, have a pretty strong guess that she was also from IOC Ioannis, and we now have her maiden name, Zacharopoulos. If your ancestor emigrated to Canada, the Library and Archives of Canada is a fabulous resource. It has so many digitized records online that will help you, immigration, citizenship, and naturalization. They also have a detailed section about Greek genealogy and history, which really surprised me. This is a manifest for the Port of Quebec City from 1865 to 1922. On line 24 of that manifest, we see that Constantine Papadopoulos, age 28, arrived in August 1909, and he was headed for Quebec. For his um, place of birth, it just says Greece, but there could be other records, hopefully for your ancestors, that do give the exact village. So last, I wanna show you some other records that you should never ever overlook in your search. The first is a census record. Even though a census record is not helpful for finding the village, it will show you an entire family, their ages, their occupations, and other data. Plus, you can place that family in a specific time. In this case, this census record is from Kingston, Ohio in 1921. I want you to look for any will or probate files in the country where your ancestor immigrated into. Will and probate records are very rich resources. Most people look for a will, but they don't think to ask for the probate file. So the will is written by the person who gives specific people money or objects. The probate records are created by the court when the person dies. And those records deal with the distribution of the estate. I have seen with my own eyes probate records, which give the name and addresses of the deceased person's family members in the country where they're living. So if you keep running into Greece, Greece, Greece with no specific village and your ancestor has died in his new homeland, um, in his new homeland, please check the probate files. If he or she left money or property to someone in his home or her home village, that is going to be in the probate files. 
And last but not all, we cannot forget about family photographs. I always love to see people post their photographs on the Hellenic Genealogy Geek Facebook page and ask for translations. And the community is so wonderful in doing these translations. Ask your older family members if you can look at their pictures and snap a picture of the picture. We've all got our phones now. They've all got cameras. Take a picture of the front and the back. And if you can't read it, then post it on Hellenic Genealogy Geek Facebook page and one of us will. I also want to remind you about military records. Your male immigrant ancestor may have been required to register in his new country, um, especially during war years. So he may have a draft registration and if he served in the military, he would have a military record. Be sure you look for it. You never know, he may have his anglicized name on there, but then again, he may not. You don't know until you actually look at it. And obituaries. Many newspapers have been digitized and are now online. Always, always, always check for an obituary. These are written by family members and you never know what they're going to decide to include. In this one, we have the names of Elaine's parents and the fact that they were from Anabriti, Laconia. Okay, well, still no luck. Searching in all the documents we discussed today should give you your ancestor's original surname and village. But if you've hit a brick wall, you may have to repeat that search for all your ancestors' family members. Nobody wants to hear that, but it is true that your grandfather's brother may have a record that your grandfather does not. So in summary, I want you to find as many sources as you can. Each of them have different information and be open to researching your family members, not just your immediate ancestor. And I just want to say, Greg, thanks so much for the opportunity to share this. I, I apologize that my screen share didn't go in the first few slides, but um, I think we have everything that people can use. And be sure everyone to download the handouts from the website. Thanks so much.